Hey YouTube, uh, I'm back to my shop this morning again working on my window and I thought I'd uh, uh, film what I'm doing here. Uh, I've been uh, busting my brain trying to figure out how I'm going to put these six sides together because they're at an angle and they can't really, you can't really hold them with a clamp or anything like that to put them together. This is what I came up with is a jig. These corner pieces I cut off. These corner pieces came off this square when I uh, made the base for it. This is this was the base. And these corner angles are at 30 degrees because that's the angle that the whole body of the windmill is on. So I took my uh, Brad Miller gun, my handy dandy Harbor Freight Brad Miller gun, and uh, I nailed some slots down on a piece of scrap board, put the angles in here so they can't move on me, and then what is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some paper, put some paper in the middle because I don't want the glue, when I glue the two pieces together, I don't want the glue to get glued to the bottom of the jig. But they're going to go in there like that. This one will go in like that. And that will pretty much hold them together. I can fine tune it a little bit to make sure they're where, they're, where they belong. Make sure I flush on the top and the bottom. And then I made several of these little braces. One end of the brace is at 30 degrees. So I will put those in the middle, like that. There will be two braces on each one. And I will uh, glue the seam first, and then I'm going to put these braces, glue these braces, and screw them into the wood. From the, uh, from the inside, I'll put two right here, two right here, and then I'll go at an angle and go into this one at an angle with maybe a inch, a one inch screw. Since this is three quarter, I don't want the screw to come up uh, outside of it. So I will use like a, a probably a one inch or inch and a quarter screw. But that's how I'm going to put these sides together. Uh, once I get three sides done, uh, then I'll take the two three sided pieces and just set them up and put them together that way. Uh, so that's my plan anyway, and we're going to see if it works or not. Uh, we'll start this again and, uh, in a little while and see how it does. Hey, uh, I'm just uh, going to do an update on this jig that I made. It seems to be working. Uh, this is what I'm doing. You see the inside of it. I cut these little pieces here at a 30 degree angle and then I put glue on this side, glue on that side and then uh, put the holes in at an angle right here and right here and that seems to be nice and sturdy it's holding it in place and I think it's going to work when I'm done I'll do the other three first before I put them together because I have to make a base that goes around the inside of the bottom here so I will put that up like that on the board, trace it out, flip it around the other side, trace out the other side. That way, when I put all this together, I'll already have that base uh, made for the bottom. Uh, so that's as far as I'm going. Uh, when I get the bottom back together, I'll turn the uh, camera back on and let you take a look and see what I did. Uh, it didn't go to exactly together. You can see the gap and stuff right here on the seams. Uh, right here. That's because when I cut these 30 degree angles, I had to use the uh, bandsaw to do it. And I freehanded it. That means I didn't have any fence or anything to keep it straight. I think I did a pretty decent job of keeping it straight. But what I'm going to do is take uh, where there's gaps, I'll take wood filler and fill it in with wood filler and then sand it smooth. And you'll never see that seam was even there. So that's the plan. Uh, and uh, I'll get some more done and uh, turn the camera back on a little while. 
Okay, I'm back. Uh, been doing some painting, working on the windmill. Uh, everything so far is coming around pretty good. Uh, on the yeah, it's dry. On the blades, the bottom part is going to be white, and then the top bar I've got red. So I think it'll look real nice. But anyway, that's the wing, the blades. This is white. These things here will be white They're with the gold chain that goes through them all the way around the windmill. Uh, I made a paint board. I don't know if you guys have ever seen something like that, but I took my, uh, I don't want to tip it down too much. I took my uh, brad nail gun and put a bunch of brad nails through a thin piece of plywood and it uh, works pretty good as far as being able to paint small pieces and stuff like that so if, if you're into doing that that's a good solution uh, also I've got the base painted and what I'm going to do is uh, move my camera uh, I came up with a solution for the body of the windmill hadn't been painted yet but it's over there on the other table so I'm going to move the camera around and show you what my solution was for those seams uh, on the main body. Okay, here's the main body uh, of the windmill. I did put these uh, plywood strips around the uh, edge banding around the top, but I just was not happy the way this body came out. As you can see right here, the I'll, I'll zoom in when I edit this, but right here where I had to put the uh, uh, wood filler, it really came out kind of crappy and uh, real disappointed in my workmanship. <laughs> I know uh, I'm just getting started in woodworking and it all takes time to learn how to do stuff, but at the same time, uh, I want to be proud of it and I want to, my wife to be proud of it when it's sitting in our yard. So the solution I came up with is I made these little slats with a 30 degree angle on one side. I'm going to take these slats, see if I can figure it out here, and these slats are going to go in here like that. Just like that. And boy is that going to cover up a bunch of sins. I think that will look much nicer. You won't, I'll be able to just glue them right on there like that and maybe even put a couple brad nails in it and uh, it's going to look very nice. Uh, the body of the windmill is going to be white so I figured with this red trim and the red trim on the blades and then the base being red that that would look really pretty uh, to have that uh, red uh, trim with the white body. So anyway that was my solution. Uh, one of these days, I might even be able to make something like this and do a good job on it. <laughs> uh, but not today. <laughs> so anyway, but I think it'll look nice. I, I mean, this is a yard ornament. Uh, I'm sure people ain't going to come over and, and uh, with a magnifying glass and inspect it and uh, critique it. So it'll be out in the yard and uh, it'll look real nice. The red paint matches our house and the garage. Uh, that's why we chose the red. Uh, the original plans called for white and blue. And blue would have been pretty. Uh, I like blue, but uh, my wife thought it would look nicer if it matched the house. So, uh, anyway, that's going to be it for now. I'll turn it back on when I get it all together. Uh, the day has arrived. I have finished the uh, windmill for the front yard. Uh, it took a lot of doing and I had to step on a little bit of people but we have arrived. Uh, it's been a challenge. I learned a lot. Uh, this is probably my first major product besides just workbenches and jigs for the table saw. So uh, I learned a lot and uh, I'll, uh, after we unveil it, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the do's and don'ts, things I should have done, 
things I would do next time, things like that. But we'll do that uh, inside the garage. I want to thank my wife for coming out here and filming this for me. Can we have the drum roll, please? And here it is. That's what she looks like. Uh, I got the gold chain here on the bottom. I got my Texas stars placed all the way around it. Uh, the only modification I made was when I put the gear housing on the top of this, the blades would hit the body. And I'm assuming that was a uh, miscalculation in the plans that I purchased online because I everything is dimensional as far as uh, what the plans and stuff were. Uh, but for some reason, and I tried to pull the blades out, but I even came out like six inches, and which looked like crap because it was too far away from the body, and uh, and it was still hitting the bot the bottom here. My other option was to cut the blades off, and I didn't want to do that. I like the nice longer blades, so I made this little box here, made an extension, raised the gear housing up a little bit, and she spins pretty now. I also didn't use a Lazy Susan, but I'll go into that later uh, when I uh, finish this video up. But that's my project. Take a look. I think I came out pretty decent. Like I said, I uh, were some other things I would have done differently if I do it again, and I'll share those with you. So if you wanted to get the plans and make your own windmill, maybe you can uh, avoid some of the pitfalls that I ran into. Uh, so that's, it'll be it for now, YouTube, and I'll be back in just a little while. Back in my garage again, got the table cleaned off, got all my tools and stuff put away and got the floor swept. And uh, I thought I'd finish off this video. I'm going to leave a copy, uh, not a copy, a link uh, to the plans if you want to purchase them. I would not suggest you buy the bearing kit. Uh, the lazy the reason I didn't use the Lazy Susan that came with the bearing kit is uh, the weight of the blades would cause the Lazy Susan to bind up. Uh, if I push down on the back of it, it would spin fine. But as soon as I let go, it would the weight of the blades would cause it to bind up and it wouldn't spin. Uh, that's why the Lazy Susan isn't on it. Also, if you uh, buy these plans and build it, you'll have to modify either the gear housing or the blades, or you'll have to build the box like I did. Uh, because of the angle and the taper of the body, the bottom of the blades, unless you unless you pull those blades out about six inches, uh, the blades would hit the body of the windmill. And by the time you get that big long rod out six inches, uh, it was too much weight in the front, and it looked like crap because you had that big old long rod sticking out. Uh, that's why I went ahead and uh, built that box and just lifted the uh, the gear housing. Uh, up so it wouldn't hit the, the blades wouldn't hit the body uh, but I'll leave a leave a uh, link to the plans in the description if anybody's interested uh, wood quality I used a lot of scrap wood around here uh, when I built the blades I just used some plywood that I had here it was not very good plywood uh, and I see how, uh, after I painted it I, I saw a lot of the defects that were in it that I didn't see when I was putting it together. Uh, if I were to do it again, I'd go to Lowe's and get some either some nice hardwood or something like that to build the blades. Because that's really the focal point of the windmill and uh, the wood it came out better if I had to use better quality wood. I already talked about the bearing kit and the gear hosing. Uh, I guess that's about it. That'll put the plug in the jug. Uh, my next project is going to be a uh, modification to my sanding station. Uh, I have it in front of that window right now with the uh, uh, exhaust fans and it does pull some of the dust out. But I'm going to build a downdraft table on it and also put some shelving uh, for sandpaper. And on the other side, I'm going to make some shelves for like the vibrator sander, belt sander, and stuff like that. That way I can keep all my sanding stuff in one spot. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing probably uh, next. And then uh, once I get that done, uh, I have some plans to build uh, some nightstands for an antique 
bedroom set that we have. Uh, we have the bed and the dresser, and it's one of those vanity type dressers. They got the drawers and stuff on each side and the big round mirror in the middle. And I'm going to try and copy the style and looks of that dresser to match the bed stands to match the looks of that dresser. Which is going to be a challenge because there's just a, a lot of embellishment in the wood and stuff and different types of trimming and stuff like that uh, that I'm going to have to figure out how to do. Uh, but that's uh, kind of what's in the future and uh, that will put the plug in the jug for this uh, build. And I hope you enjoyed uh, watching it and seeing the finished product. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, uh, please do. Uh, I'm close to 100 subscribers, and I know some people have thousands and thousands, but uh, if I could hit 100, I'd be real happy. <laughs> so uh, that'll do it for this time, and uh, we'll see you next time.